I am deeply grateful for all of you here tonight to celebrate my grandfather's life. Tonight you heard about my grandpa as a businessman, as an entrepreneur, as a philanthropist of Ohio State. You heard about him as a husband and a father. You've heard the character traits that he's remembered by and even some of his hobbies from his personal life. So tonight, just by a show of hands, how many of you have at least one positive memory of a grandparent? Okay. Well, tonight I'm going to share with you what it was like to be Peter Scott's grandson. When I was a young boy, I, uh, I knew something was special about my grand grandfather. I didn't fully understand the success that he had in business, but I knew something was very unique about him. So when most kids aspired to be astronauts or firemen or play in the NBA, I just wanted to be like my grandpa. Yes, you did. So when I was 12 years old, I wrote a letter to my grandpa asking him if he could teach me how to become a CEO. <laughs> and I got a letter in the mail back from him. I opened it up and it was handwritten on beautiful professional letterhead inviting me to schedule a business meeting with him to discuss the vision for my future and hear about the journey that he took through his career. So that summer, I flew down to North Carolina to see my grandparents. And I remember one night before dinner, my grandfather invited me into his office. And I have to be honest, I was nervous. <laughs> I walked in and there's these tall oak bookshelves that he built by hand from his workshop. He had portraits of himself framed from all the different stages in his career. He had periodicals from the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times and the USA Today highlighting his success in his career. And we sat down, he had a uh, whiteboard right in the middle of his office. And on it he wrote CEO at the top and entry level at the bottom. He said, grandson, how would you advise me, how would you suggest getting from point A to point B? I thought hard about it. I said, well, that's easy. The shortest distance between two points is a straight line. So I would just start here and just climb that corporate ladder to become a CEO. And he said, theoretically, that sounds great. But let me show you my path. So he raced my straight line, and he drew a zigzag from entry level across the board about seven or eight times to CEO. He said, I want, to take, I want you to take this away. I want you in your career and anything in life to always begin with the end in mind. Always have a clear vision for your future and be very strategic about planning it out, but be flexible because there's going to be obstacles that you come across in your path. There are going to be new opportunities that you don't expect and you're always going to have to adapt throughout your life. So learning that at 12 years old was valuable. But as I thought about this memory over the last couple of months preparing for tonight, I learned a much deeper level or lesson. And it was that my grandfather raised me as an adult. You know, most 12-year-olds would get a pat on their head from their father or their grandfather. He actually invited me to schedule a business meeting. So he always treated me as an equal. If you knew my grandpa, you would know the most important person in his life was my grandma. They had an extraordinary love relationship. And as I said in the video tonight, when I was asked if I thought the phrase behind every great man is a great woman, I disagreed with that because my grandmother was never in the shadows behind my grandfather. She was right by his side every step of the way. They were best friends. They had a partnership that was unbreakable. They were on the same page in every area of their life. Now, most grandparents could teach their grandchildren about business and about love. But what did I really learn 
from Peter Scott as his grandson? Well, to be honest, uncomfortably honest, my grandfather taught me what my father couldn't. He taught me to be self-reliant and to be solely responsible for my existence during the short time here. He taught me to have a clear vision for my future, no matter what obstacles I come across. He taught me to be flexible, but hold steadfast. And he taught me to treat everyone I come in contact with as an equal. He treated me as an equal at 12 years old, and he treated my grandmother as an equal their entire lives together. My father can't be here tonight because he lost his battle with cancer three years ago. And we loved each other deeply. I was the most important person in his world. But like many fathers and sons, we didn't always see eye to eye. So when my father dropped the ball, my grandfather was there to pick it up. And that's why I'm grateful for the man that he was and the man that I've become because of him. Thank you.